Okay, so here we have an incomplete records question from 2003. That's some time ago, but it will serve the purpose because it's a nice question to start off with. All right, so the first thing to do whenever you are tackling any question in any subject, theory or otherwise, is you have to read the question. And you also have to understand the information that is in the question and understand what is being asked of you. So let's start there. So this guy does not maintain a complete set of accounting records. Not a good idea. However, he provided you with the following information. What do we have? We have a summarized bank account. So on the debit side, we see there are just a couple of items, opening balance and one receipt. On the credit side, we see we have, it's much more populated, quite a few items on the closing balance. So we have a, um, some stuff to, to use there. All right, next, what do we have just below that? We have some items here, creditors, prepaid telephone, okay. And we have one column saying December 31st, 2000, and another column saying December 31st, 2001. So these are the opening and closing balances respectively for each of these items here. We also have one more item just below all that information, which is telling us about the depreciation on the motor van. So always be sure to read the question thoroughly because I have, it's, it's happened to me. I've jumped into a question, list, gone straight to the requirements. Okay, trading and profits, all right, fine. Started the question and the next thing you know, I have to start over because I missed an important piece of information or I have to cross out way too many things because I have to shift things down and make things fit. And back when I was doing CXC, which was in 1998, by the way, quite some time ago, way before any of you all were born, um, we had a separate booklet in which you could have recorded your answers. However, you guys, since 2015, I believe, you guys have a limited, a finite amount of space on the paper, on your question paper, in, on which you have to write. And because of that, to me, it's kind of added to the stress and anxiety of some people because if they make a mistake, they might not have enough to finish to fit all this stuff. Yes, they have a couple of extra pages at the end of, behind the booklet, and I believe you should be able to ask for more paper, but I'm not 100% sure that works all the time. So yes, so yes, don't be frightened. Everything will fit if you prepare properly, okay? Even if you make a mistake, put a line through it and do what you can do to make it fit. Once it's legible, they have to correct it, okay? All right, so let's get back to the question, all right? So what do we want to do? We want to do a trading and profit and loss account for the year ending December 31st, 2001, okay? So the first thing we need is sales. But the thing is we have no sales figure in the entire question. So what do we do? Well, do we have anything related to sales? Well, what's this item here? Receipt from debtors. Okay, well, debtors are people who owe us money because we make credit sales to them. And credit sales are sales where you sell to the person on credit and they don't pay you at that point in time, but they promise to pay you in the future. So that's money from them. So clearly we made credit sales and this is the money from some of the debtors. Well, we don't know how, many, how much sales we made, so we can't say if it's all. Um, so do we just use this figure as sales? Well, no. Because if we look further down in the question, we see a debtor's figure here, a debtor's item, sorry, and we have two balances, opening and closing. So what do we do? Well, we use a debtor's control account, right? So let me come on this side here. All right, so debtor's control account. All right, now how do we classify debtors? Asset, liability, capital, expense, revenue, other. Well, a debtor is someone who owes us money, and that's an asset. All right, so what are your double entry rules for assets? debit to increase and credit to decrease, which means therefore that assets usually have debit balances at start. So we're gonna put balance brought down here. Now, let's go back across here. Debtors, opening balance, 18,000. Closing balance, 21,000. The closing balance goes on the opposite side, All right? 21,000. Right? Because, of course, it's going to be brought down on this side. And to be brought down on the debit side, you have to first be carried down from the credit side. Now, what else do we have? We have one more piece of information for debtors. Receipts from debtors. Well, what side does that go on on the control account? Well, let's look for some context. In the bank account, it's on the debit side, which means in the other account affected by this transaction, it'll be on the opposite side, which means in the control account, it will be on the credit side. So we'll just put banks. Some people like to put receipts from debtors, cash book, cash last bank. Once you put something along those lines, you should be fine. That's 109, oops, I missed out a zero, didn't I? All right, let's put a zero in. Right, now, what we need to find here, the balancing figure will be credit sales. All right, so I'm just gonna use Excel to help me calculate that. 
you know? All right, so this figure here will be equal to your total on this side minus total on that side. So that is up. So $193,000. All right, I just like to format my items so certain things stand out when I'm showing my students. So I'm hoping this helps you to see it better here. All right, so we have our credit sales. Now, credit sales is one item. Do we have any cash sales? Um, that would be here usually. No, we have no cash sales. Nothing else down here says cash sales. Okay. So, all right. So we need stock. We have. Do we have stock? Yes. Opening stock, closing stock, purchases. Ooh, no purchases. Okay. So what do we have to do? Well, what do we do? We have any information regarding purchases? Well, I'm seeing a payments to creditors item on this side, and just like receipts from debtors, this is where we bought goods on credit and we're paying off with them. Um, <clears throat> so do we just use this figure? No, we have to do a control account to find credit purchases. So let's head up um, creditors control account. Whoops, let's go back across. All right, um, we have opening balance, closing balance. Now, how do we classify creditors? Debtors is an asset and creditors is the opposite, which means it's a liability, which means you're gonna credit to increase and then debit to decrease. So the opening balance should be on the debit side, and that was 24,000. The closing balance will be carried down from the opposite side. Oops, come on. All right, and that's 28,000. And we are missing a couple of items. All right, payments to creditors. So payments to creditors is on the credit side here, which means it's gonna be on the debit side here. So that we'll just put it as bank. If you want, you could put payments to creditors. That's Sorry, 92,500. And the missing figure would be the credit purchases. Which, when we balance off, will be the difference between those two items. The total on the credit side, debit side, sorry, and the credit side as well. Aha, 96,5. All right, so we have that, that. All right, so that is how you find credit sales and credit purchases in, in complete records question, at least for the most part, given this context, this information, right? You have a cash book, bank account, opening and closing balances for debtors and creditors, and you put those things together. Of course, you should always be careful to read to make sure that you've used all of the relevant information. Sometimes they like to stick in a returns in words or a discount allowed or something else just to see if you're paying attention. So please do pay attention. All right, guys, so I hope this video has been helpful. Um, the next video I'm going to do is going to teach you guys how to deal with these expense accounts and their opening and closing prepaid or accrued balances. All right, so if this video has been helpful and you like it, give that like button a click. If you want to subscribe, please feel free to do so. If you want to share this video, I'll be very happy if you do that. Okay, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.